Exercise therapy is widely regarded as an essential tool in the prevention, treatment and management of a range of diseases and impairments. Numerous clinical trials have demonstrated that resistance training exercises in particular can help to improve function and reduce pain in lots of different patient populations. But some people may be unable or unwilling to perform conventional exercise, and those that are may not fully adhere to the exercise regime that has been prescribed to them. Exercise can also exacerbate pain and inflammation in impaired populations and temporarily reduce voluntary muscle activation. So in these groups, neuromuscular electrical stimulation, or NMES, may be an alternative or adjunct method of enhancing muscle strength. Neuromuscular electrical stimulation is achieved by a device that delivers intermittent electrical impulses to muscle fibres through electrodes placed on the skin. These impulses induce action potentials which stimulate motor nerves, and this results in muscle activation. In fact, neuromuscular electrical stimulation can produce muscle contractions equivalent of up to 60% of a maximal voluntary contraction. The advantages of neuromuscular electrical stimulation as a therapeutic agent are that it can be self-administered at home, unsupervised, and carries a low metabolic load. As a result, it provides an acceptable therapy to patients living with a high symptom burden. Basically, as a passive treatment, it demands less change in lifestyle than other forms of exercise. Like other electrophysical modalities, neuromuscular electrical stimulation is typically administered within a series of boundary parameters. Its frequency is usually set between 50 and 100 Hz. Its pulse is usually in waveform geometrical patterns and is often monophasic or biphasic. The duration of the pulse, that is the length of time that the electrical current is on, can be between 1 and 1000 microseconds, but is more often between 100 to 400 microseconds. The duty cycle, which is the percentage of time the current is on, can be anywhere between 20% to 50%. For example, the muscle might be stimulated to contract for 10 seconds with a rest period of 50 seconds, and this would be a 20% duty cycle. Finally, the intensity of the stimulation is adjusted according to individual tolerance, which can vary significantly due to factors like adiposity, which can affect the conduction of current to the stimulated region, as well as the individual's perception of pain or discomfort. The usual treatment program involves two or more sessions per week, 10 to 30 minutes each, for a period of four to five months. Although there is still no consensus on the standardization of optimal NMES parameters or overall dosages. The muscle group most commonly targeted is the quadriceps, but NMES is also commonly applied to the calves, hamstrings and glutes. The main adverse effects of NMES are muscular discomfort caused by the electrical stimuli and excessive neuromuscular fatigue, which can be reduced by adjusting the various parameters I mentioned previously. Neuromuscular electrical stimulation should not be applied over the thoracic region as it can cause changes in cardiac rhythm and is not recommended for people with hypertension or those using pacemakers. It is also not recommended during late pregnancy. But NMES can be used safely and effectively in patients with cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and heart disease. In fact, programs appear to be well tolerated and are associated with improvements in muscle function, exercise capacity and certain aspects of quality of life, like exertional breathlessness. But in the next part, we'll delve a little deeper into some of the specific research around the uses and benefits of neuromuscular electrical stimulation for specific populations. For people in the advanced stages of progressive diseases, such as cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and chronic heart failure, neuromuscular electrical stimulation may be an effective treatment for muscle weakness. The authors of a 2016 Cochrane Review recommended that, while the evidence was very limited in that studies compared NMES to a group that received no treatment or a sham treatment, rather than a control group who performed resistance exercises, it can be used within rehabilitation programs. The authors highlighted that the evidence for an effect from NMES on exercise performance and quality of life was of very low quality. They suggested that for these outcomes, current evidence would support the use of conventional exercise training over NMES, but when patients are unwilling or unable to undertake other forms of training, the evidence supports NMES as a means to manage muscle weakness. 
Another Cochrane review which synthesized the literature around chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patients specifically found that, when applied in isolation from other rehabilitation strategies, neuromuscular electrostimulation applied to the quadriceps increases quadriceps force and quadriceps endurance. It also improved performance during the six minute walk test, time to symptom limitation exercising at a submaximal intensity and the severity of leg fatigue on completion of an exercise test. On this basis, the authors recommended that, in participants who are unable or unwilling to attend a pulmonary rehabilitation program, consideration could be given to using NMES instead. NMES could theoretically be useful for patients with patellofemoral pain to strengthen the quadriceps muscles in general, and also to selectively strengthen the vastus medialis muscle, thereby correcting patellar alignment. The idea is that because NMES promotes simultaneous vastus medialis and vastus lateralis muscle contractions, it apparently leads to a significant increase in quadriceps muscle force. But a recent Cochrane review found insufficient and inconclusive evidence from randomized trials to inform on the role of neuromuscular electrical stimulation for treating people with patellofemoral pain in clinical practice. The authors lamented the very low quality of evidence available, which meant that they were uncertain whether or not a multiple session program of NMES combined with exercise over several weeks versus exercise alone might result in a clinically important difference in knee pain and function at the end of a treatment period. The same is true of the research on patients post ACL reconstruction. And then another review evaluating studies in patients undergoing knee arthroplasty could make no definitive conclusions about the application of neuromuscular electrical stimulation for the purposes of quadriceps strengthening, either pre or post surgery. NMES is also often commercially marketed as an effective modality for enhancing recovery from exercise in athletic populations. But a recent systematic review found that there is insufficient evidence to support this. Specifically, while NMES can have a positive blood lactate lowering effect compared with passive recovery and can decrease subjective ratings of pain, there is no evidence to support its use for enhancing subsequent exercise performance compared with traditional recovery methods. There are also a range of commercial NMES units marketed as weight loss tools, and while research is limited, the US Food and Drug Administration, which regulates these and other electrical muscle stimulation devices in the US, has rejected claims that they can be used for weight loss. You see, calories are expended in significant amount only when most of the body is involved in physical exercise, where several muscles or muscle groups, the heart and the respiratory system, are all engaged at once, not when one is activated in isolation. That's why electrical stimulation devices only cause marginal caloric expenditure. But what about gains in muscle strength? While a recent systematic review with meta-regression comparing the strength gains that can be achieved with conventional strength training versus strength training combined with NMES found that there was no differences in general strength development between the groups. The authors highlighted, though, that a training period of six to eight weeks could be an interesting alternative for highly trained athletes, but cautioned that NMES training, especially when used in multi-joint exercises, should only be a supplement to conventional strength training because of the possibility of changing intermuscular coordination patterns. It should never be used as a complete replacement. So to conclude, in this lecture I talked about neuromuscular electrical stimulation, which involves the administration of electrical currents to the skin and underlying motor units via a lightweight, battery-powered stimulator unit with self-adhesive electrodes. I discussed the rationale for its use as an adjunct to or imitator of an exercise stimulus. I talked about a number of adverse effects and contraindications and finished by discussing the research around NMES in different populations. 